impeachment of Bill Clinton, floor proceedings of the U.S. Senate during the trial of President Bill Clinton in 1999, Chief Justice William Rehnquist presiding. House managers are seated beside the quarter circular tables on the left, and the president's personal counsel on the right. The impeachment of Bill Clinton was initiated by the House of Representatives on December 19, 1998, against Bill Clinton, the 42nd President of the United States, on two charges, one of perjury and one of obstruction of justice. These charges stemmed from Clinton's extramarital affair with former White House intern Monica Lewinsky and his testimony about the affair during a sexual harassment lawsuit filed against him by Paula Jones. Clinton was subsequently acquitted of these charges by the Senate on February 12, 1999. Two other impeachment articles, a second perjury charge and a charge of abuse of power, failed in the House, leading to the impeachment. Independent counsel Ken Starr turned over documentation to the House Judiciary Committee. Chief Prosecutor David Shippers and his team reviewed the material and determined there was sufficient evidence to impeach the president. As a result, four charges were considered by the full House of Representatives, two passed, making Clinton the second president to be impeached after Andrew Johnson in 1868, and only the third against whom articles of impeachment had been brought before the full House for consideration. The trial in the United States Senate began right after the seating of the 106th Congress, in which the Republican Party began with 55 senators. A two-thirds vote was required to remove Clinton from office. Fifty senators voted to remove Clinton on the obstruction of justice charge and 45 voted to remove him on the perjury charge. No member of his own Democratic Party voted guilty on either charge. Clinton, like Johnson a century earlier, was acquitted on all charges. Independent Council Investigation the charges arose from an investigation by Ken Starr, an independent counsel, originally dealing with the failed land deal years earlier known as Whitewater Starr, with the approval of United States Attorney General Janet Reno, conducted a wide-ranging investigation of alleged abuses, including the firing of White House travel agents, the alleged misuse of FBI files and Bill Clinton's conduct during the sexual harassment lawsuit filed by a former Arkansas government employee, Paula Jones. In the course of the investigation, Linda Tripp provided Starr with taped phone conversations in which Monica Lewinsky, a former White House intern, discussed having performed fellatio on Clinton at the deposition. The judge rejected the plaintiff's lawyer's definition of the term, sexual relations, that Clinton claims to have construed to mean only vaginal intercourse. Judge Wright then told the attorneys they could be as explicit as necessary in asking their questions. A much-quoted statement from Clinton's grand jury testimony showed him questioning the precise use of the word is, contending that his statement that there's nothing going on between us had been truthful, because he had no ongoing relationship with Lewinsky at the time he was questioned, Clinton said. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. is. If the if he if is means is, and never has been, that is not, that is one thing. If it means there is none, that was a completely true statement. Starr obtained further evidence of inappropriate behavior by seizing the computer hard drive and email records of Monica Lewinsky. Based on the president's conflicting testimony, Starr concluded that Clinton had committed perjury. Starr submitted his findings to Congress in a lengthy document and simultaneously posted the report on the Internet. 
replete with lurid descriptions of encounters between Clinton and Lewinsky. Starr was criticized by Democrats for spending $70 million on an investigation that substantiated only perjury and obstruction of justice. Critics of Starr also contend that his investigation was highly politicized because it regularly leaked tidbits of information to the press in violation of legal ethics, and because his report included lengthy descriptions which were humiliating yet irrelevant to the legal case. January 1998 Press Conference After rumors of the scandal reached the news, Clinton publicly stated, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky, in his Paula Jones deposition. He swore, I have never had sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. I've never had an affair with her. Months later, Clinton admitted that his relationship with Lewinsky was wrong and not appropriate. Lewinsky engaged in oral sex with Clinton several times. Impeachment by House of Representatives since Ken Starr had already completed an extensive investigation, the House Judiciary Committee conducted no investigations of its own into Clinton's alleged wrongdoing, and it held no serious impeachment-related hearings before the 1998 midterm elections. Nevertheless, impeachment was one of the major issues in the election. In November 1998, the Democrats picked up five seats in the House, while the Republicans still maintained majority control. The results were a particular embarrassment for House Speaker Newt Gingrich, who, prior to the election, had been reassured by private polling that Clinton's scandal would result in the Republican Party gaining as many as 30 House seats. Shortly after the elections, Gingrich, who had been one of the leading advocates for impeachment, announced he would resign from Congress as soon as he was able to find somebody to fill his vacant seat. Gingrich fulfilled this pledge and officially resigned from Congress on January 3, 1999. Impeachment proceedings were initiated during the post-election lame duck session of the outgoing 105th United States Congress. Unlike the case of the 1974 impeachment process against Richard Nixon, the committee hearings were perfunctory, but the floor debate in the whole House was spirited on both sides. The Speaker-designate, Representative Bob Livingston, chosen by the Republican Party conference, to replace Gingrich as House Speaker, announced the end of his candidacy for Speaker, and his resignation from Congress from the floor of the House after his own marital infidelity came to light. In the same speech, Livingston also encouraged Clinton to resign. Clinton chose to remain in office, and urged Livingston to reconsider his resignation. Many other prominent Republican members of Congress had infidelities exposed about this time, all of whom voted for impeachment. Publisher Larry Flint offered a reward for such information and many supporters of Clinton accused Republicans of hypocrisy. Upon the passage of H.R.S. 611, Clinton was impeached on December 19, 1998, by the House of Representatives on grounds of perjury to a grand jury and obstruction of justice. Two other articles of impeachment failed, a second count of perjury in the Jones case and one accusing Clinton of abuse of power. Clinton thus became the second U.S. president to be impeached. Following Jean Taylor of Mississippi voted in favor of three of the four articles of impeachment, but only Taylor voted for the abuse of power charge. Five Republicans voted against the first perjury charge. Eight more Republicans, but not Suda, voted against the obstruction charge. Twenty-eight Republicans voted against the second perjury charge, sending it to defeat. 
and 81 voted against the abuse of power charge. Acquittal by the Senate Now let us all take our place in history on the side of honor, and, oh, yes, let right be done. On February 9, after voting against a public deliberation on the verdict, the Senate began closed-door deliberations instead. On February 12, the Senate emerged from its closed deliberations and voted on the Articles of Impeachment. A two-thirds majority, 67 votes, would have been necessary to convict and remove the president from office. The perjury charge was defeated with 45 votes for conviction and 55 against. The obstruction of justice charge was defeated with 50 for conviction and 50 against. Senate votes William Rehnquist during the proceedings won some media attention for the distinctive gold stripes, which were inspired by a costume from the Gilbert and Sullivan opera Iolanthe. All 45 Democrats in the Senate voted not guilty on both charges. The five Republican senators who voted against conviction on both charges were John Chafee of Rhode Island, Susan Collins of Maine, Jim Jeffords of Vermont, Olympia Snow of Maine, and Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania. Specter, who said he was not prepared to cast a guilty or not guilty vote, voted not proven, which was counted as a not guilty vote. The additional five Republican senators who voted not guilty only on the perjury charge were Slade Gorton of Washington, Richard Shelby of Alabama, Ted Stevens of Alaska, Fred Thompson of Tennessee, and John Warner of Virginia. Notes, D. Democrat. R. Republican Specter announced his vote as not proven, a verdict used in Scots law. As this was not an option, his vote was recorded as not guilty. Contempt of Court Citation in April 1999, about two months after being acquitted by the Senate, Clinton was cited by Federal District Judge Susan Weber Wright for civil contempt of court for his willful failure to obey her repeated orders to testify truthfully in the Paula Jones sexual harassment lawsuit. For this citation, Clinton was assessed a $90,000 fine, and the matter was referred to the Arkansas Supreme Court to see if disciplinary action would be appropriate. Regarding Clinton's January 17, 1998, deposition where he was placed under oath, the judge wrote, simply put, the president's deposition testimony regarding whether he had ever been alone with Ms. Lewinsky was intentionally false and his statements regarding whether he had ever engaged in sexual relations with Ms. Lewinsky likewise were intentionally false. On the day before leaving office in January 2001, President Clinton agreed to a five-year suspension of his Arkansas law license as part of an agreement with the Independent Council to end the investigation. Clinton was automatically suspended from the United States Supreme Court bar as a result of his law license suspension. However, as is customary, he was allowed 40 days to appeal an otherwise automatic disbarment. The former president resigned from the Supreme Court bar during the 40-day appeals period. Civil Settlement with Paula Jones Eventually, the court dismissed the Paula Jones harassment lawsuit before trial, on the grounds that Jones failed to demonstrate any damages. However, while the dismissal was on appeal, Clinton entered into an out-of-court settlement by agreeing to pay Jones $850,000. Political Ramifications Polls conducted during 1998 and early 1999 showed that only about one-third 
of Americans supported Clinton's impeachment to conviction. However, one year later, when it was clear that House impeachment would not lead to the ousting of the president, half of Americans said in a CNN, USA Today, Gallup poll that they supported impeachment, but 57% approved of the Senate's decision to keep him in office and two-thirds of those polled said the impeachment was harmful to the country. While Clinton's job approval rating rose during the Lewinsky scandal and subsequent impeachment, his poll numbers with regard to questions of honesty, integrity and moral character declined. As a result, moral character and honesty weighed heavily in the next presidential election. According to the Daily Princetonian, after the 2000 presidential election, post-election polls found that, in the wake of Clinton-era scandals, the single most significant reason people voted for Bush was for his moral character. According to an analysis of the election by Stanford University, the Stanford analysis, however, presented different theories and mainly argued that Gore had lost because he decided to distance himself from Clinton during the campaign. The writers of it concluded, according to the America's Future Foundation, political commentators, however, have argued that Gore's refusal to have Clinton campaign with him was a bigger liability to Gore than Clinton's scandals. The 2000 U.S. congressional election also saw the Democrats gain more seats in Congress. As a result of this gain, control of the U.S. Senate was split 50-50 between both parties, and Democrats would regain control over the U.S. Senate after Republican Senator Jim Jeffords defected from his party in the spring of 2001 and agreed to caucus with the Democrats. Al Gore reportedly confronted Clinton after the election, and tried to explain that keeping Clinton under wraps during the campaign was a rational response to polls showing swing voters were still mad as hell over the year of Monica. According to the app, during the one-on-one -on -one meeting at the White House, which lasted more than an hour, Gore used uncommonly blunt language to tell Clinton that his sex scandal and low personal approval ratings were a hurdle he could not surmount in his campaign, with the core of the dispute was Clinton's lies to Gore, and the nation about his affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Clinton, however, was unconvinced by Gore's argument and insisted to Gore that he would have won the election if he had embraced the administration and its good economic record. Ensuing events for 13 House managers Of the 13 members of the House who managed Clinton's trial in the Senate, one lost to a Democrat in his 2000 bid for re-election. Charles Kennedy retired from Congress in 2000, following through on a previous term limits pledge to voters, and Bill McCollum ran unsuccessfully for the U.S. Senate. Asa Hutchinson, after being re-elected in 2000, left Congress after being appointed head of the Drug Enforcement Administration by President George W. Bush. In 2014 Hutchinson was elected governor of Arkansas. In 2002, two former House managers lost their seats after redistricting placed them in the same district as another incumbent, while two more ran for the U.S. Senate. The other five remained in the House well into the 2000s, and two are still members. In 2009, Sensenbrenner served again as a manager for the impeachment of Judge Samuel B. Kent of Texas as well as serving in 2010 as Republican lead manager in the impeachment of Judge Thomas Porteous of Louisiana. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.